So we're dealing with um, aldoses here, uh, specifically hexoses, and the ways in which they differ from one another. So this is a hexose, an aldohexose, known as allose, and this is one known as altrose. Okay, so um, there is a difference between them. Each one of these little intersections represents a stereocenter. Now they're all, um, you know, they all have their OHs on one side, and so they're all going to have their own stereocenters here. And this one has a difference right here. The stereocenter here is reversed. That makes these two diastereomers. Uh, it's a word we used a lot in first semester, so they're going to have different chemical and physical properties, and you can separate them physically. But uh, these also would be referred to as epimers. And that is the, the special word we use to describe how two different sugars with a difference at one stereocenter can be different from one another. And specifically, because this is the second carbon, we would call these C2 epimers. Okay, and that's the, that's the relationship we, do, we use to describe how the two of those sort of interact with each other. Now, uh, something like this, and this is glucose. Now, one more thing that I should say about this is that if we take a look here at the bottom one, and if the OH is on the right-hand side, which in just about all the ones we look at, that gives the entire molecule what's known as a, a designation of D. So this is d allose or d altrose. Okay, so we look at the bottom one to determine if the entire molecule is um, D or L. So, uh, with this reaction here, um, we can actually have uh, two epimers kind of be in equilibrium with each other. So glucose right here, if a base were to grab onto this, and these electrons were to be brought here, and these electrons were kicked up here, then what we end up having is this. Okay, so that's what happens there. We have a new double bond that formed here. And uh, we've got one, two, three. So we still have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, just like we did over here. So we'll have our O8, which, I'm sorry, that should just be H, OH, 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 H and H. Okay, so now we have sort of this, um, and this is not an N, that's an H. And so we, we have this um, sort of enolate here, where we've got this um, anion, and it can end up um, picking up from water that was just formed. Okay, uh, it can end up grabbing onto one of these hydrogens, give this back, and these electrons end up coming back down. And it can go back into equilibrium with this, where the H and the OH are effectively switched. So if you take a look here, and you take a look here, the H and the OH are on different sides, which makes them different, different substances. So this is D mannose. This is D glucose. Okay? So these two things can end up switching sides, and that's how we end up, um, you know, through an epi epi epimerization reaction. Excuse my stuttering there. Now, um, another kind of reaction that we can have to happen is an oxidation reaction. And the oxidation reaction can take place in a number of ways, and one of the reagents that works is using bromine, Br2. This is sort of like a reddish brown. And if this is entered into a solution that has something like an aldehyde, aldehyde in there, it can oxidize that aldehyde. So this would end up being reduced, and it can oxidize this aldehyde into making a carboxylic acid and bromide ion. And this is colorless. Okay, so basically if you have a test tube that goes from red to colorless, when you put a, a sugar or an, um, an aldose, this one being specifically glucose, in solution with bromine, you end up with a carboxylic acid and you end up with something that is colorless. So through a color change, you can determine whether or not I have an aldose. If I were to try that with the ketose, this can't be oxidized any further. Okay, there's no other hydrogen to work with, so there is no reaction. So this stays red. So this is a very good colorimetric determination. This is a good test to see if you have an aldose, because it would become colorless, or if you have a ketose, because it would stay red.
Okay, so these oxidation reactions are quite handy in, in trying to determine the difference between aldoses and ketoses. Trying to determine which aldose or which ketose you have is an entirely different set of reactions, which, which can take a bit more work.